Danny, one of your former clubs, Tottenham, what's going on there this morning? Antonio Conte <clears> has been uh, talking and he's been pretty much, it's fair to say, talking down uh, Tottenham's chances of uh, Champions League qualification, uh, outlining at the same time how their January transfer window business has left them technically weaker. I mean, when Conte talks at the moment, I don't know what we're hearing. Are we hearing realism or is it a tone of defeatism? Going to get your take on it in a second, Danny. This was him sending out mixed messages when he was talking to be in sport. In the past, uh, I always said that I have to feel, no, I have to feel to to feel one percent uh, the possibility to win, no, uh, in this case uh, to win uh, to win the league. For sure, here uh, the, the situation has changed because uh, maybe I feel the the one percent of possibility to have the ambition, the ambition to finish uh, to finish four. And uh, in this moment, we have to fight with these teams. Not with the top teams. We have to know this, and uh, it's important not not be scared about the situation now. But uh, we need to have uh, the desire, no, the the will to to fight the situation, to try to rebuild again. For me, it's a totally different situation compared to my my past. Wow, that end bit's an interesting bit. I think it's a totally different situation compared to my past. Well, that's, that's. I mean, we know that's, that. That's, got yeah, we know that. Yeah. So you know, it's different for you here at Tottenham. So get on with it. Well, I think there's a couple of aspects. The first one is I would like to hear a bit more positivity and a bit more energy and you know, fight and and, and well, he's saying they'll fight, but you know, a bit more positivity around optimism, what yeah. they can do and what you know what they want to do. Um, there is a bit of lack of clarity. We talked about this on Monday. Sometimes when he speaks, you're kind of thinking, what's he trying to say? <clears throat> so it's not helpful, but. I have to cut him some slack because there's a lot of headlines around that aren't correct. This 1% chance, what he, what he was actually saying is that I've always said that I have to feel only 1% possibility to win the league at the clubs he's been at before. So what he's saying is one little bit of hope and I'll grasp it and we'll, we'll we, I believe. What he's saying is that the thing here at Tottenham is I'm using that 1% is for the top four. We can't win the league, but I'm using that 1% for the top four. So it sounds negative, yeah. but he's not saying we've only got 1%. He's saying he only needs a glimmer of hope and he'll work on that and he'll and we're going to fight. how are we all meant to react to this, Danny? Like, yeah, we know Antonio, so yeah. go on with it. Well, I it, mean, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, depends. Know, go, so, so do it, go it, do it. It depends as a supporter whether you like reality and honesty or whether you like a bit more optimism, positivity and energy. I prefer the latter. And is, I it, also, is this not defeatism? It's a little bit negative. I, I don't I like mean, this that. Is, I'll paraphrase it. That, oh God, we are up against it here. Yeah. And I, I think I was going to go on to say, relevant to what the supporters think, I think as players, as a group, you want a bit more of the opposite. I don't think it's beneficial to the players. I don't know what he's saying to them behind closed doors, whether there's a, completely con a complete contradiction in terms of a different message. Unlikely. But, well... I say online, I don't know him, so I don't know what he's doing behind closed doors. The fact is that the way he's coming across is creating headlines and, and a negativity around their but chance. Is, but is yeah. he? I mean, I mean yes, this, he is. I, I'm, so. I'm the first person to push back on some of the riddle me this, riddle me that, but he's speaking truth to an audience that want to extrapolate that information uh, yeah, upwards, yeah, yeah. right? If you, if you were into Milan and you were Chelsea, he talked about, these are the two teams that he's run uh, managed recently that have won titles, and he talked about, I have a 1% chance, and he must have been referencing those teams that he's managed. And now he's doing the same thing, in reality, to Tottenham and saying, we have a 1%, it's a different, this is strange for me, because it's different, the 1% chance he thinks he has normally is to win the league. The 1% chance, or the 1% chance he needs, let's say, is to get into the Champions League, which in real terms is for Spurs winning a form of league, because that's what they're aiming for with him. So I look at it and say, we are, we're taking his words and building a narrative underneath it, which is the underlying narrative, which is Conte is not happy with Tottenham, Conte is going to get turned over by Daniel Levy, he's not going to get what he wants and he's going to be Conte walking out of the door in the summer. That's the underlying connotation. So then what we do then is we take everything he says, ignore the language barrier that is not his first language, superimpose our interpretation over it with the underpinning narrative is Conte is going to explode soon. We've got no evidence of that. That's why I said cut him some slack. I don't think he's going to explode soon, but I'm just wondering, you what, what's, what's the relevance of him saying, look at what happened in January. Not easy. We lost four players, right? We know that. Yes. In Dumbelli, Deli Alley, Lucelso and Gill. He says four important players for Tottenham and we brought in only two. So in terms of numbers, rather than reinforce the squad, we weakened it. No, but he all, no, you got it. This is the thing, paraphrasing. He actually said, and this is the problem, Simon's right about the language. <clears throat> so, even numerically, instead of strengthening, you may have on paper 
weakened on paper. Yep. Yep. And what he also then goes on to say, and this is how you have to give it context, yep. that the Bentancur and Kulisevsky are ideal prospects for Tottenham. Tottenham is looking for young players, players to be developed, not ready, not ready players. And and he's saying, and he also goes on to say he knew that when he came in. Exactly. And this is what's going to happen exactly. as we continue. So he, the and problem, he's managing the, expectations. He's managing expectations. The problem is when you then turn around and go, he's, he's putting a market hold on, down, Jim. Prepare for prepare for failure. Yeah. yeah what what he no, goes what he goes on to say and where where I think that there's a line is when he talks about. If you want success and to compete with the top clubs, you need to b- bring in players who are ready-made. Yes. Not players who you want to develop. And we have to decide whether that's an accusation back at Tottenham and they're not going to spend yes. what it takes. That's where, we, that's where the interpretation can come in. And that's, that's where I think he's gone over the line and caused this. And that's where you'll get a, a section of Tottenham fans going, oh, come on. Give it a rest now. Let's let's work on what we've got. Yes. Let's try. But there is a. I, mean, this I, is, think, I think Danny's just nailed it. Simon. There, I understand that's that. exactly what but he's it, talking but, about. But, there's also, but there's also a sense of reality because, unfortunately for Conte, whether he likes it or he doesn't like it, his reputation precedes him. Yeah. So he's supposed to hit the ground running, and already. Just because Tottenham haven't set the light the world on, on fire, even though they're doing relatively well by comparison to what people thought they were going to do with Nudo Espirito Santo at the helm, the narrative again is being built up that Conti is not going to stay the course. He's going to be disappointed. They've not had the instantaneous bounce. And he's basically saying, this club is going to buy potential. I'm going to build that potential. Yeah. We're not going to buy ready-made. And the argument could be in between the lines. Let's, don't forget this is not his first language. The argument could be right between the lines that he's basically saying, and Tottenham fans might want to hear this and necessarily concur with it, or the media might want to hear and concur with it. Levy won't put his hands in his pocket and buy ready-made talent. So Tottenham are going to have to wait for Conte. Ah, but hang on a second. How can they wait for Conte? He's only got an 18-month contract, and up we spin. Mm. Right? Rather than saying, actually, he's speaking truths yep. to the situation. He's telling you that Tottenham aren't going to spend... Seven, aren't going to spend £100 million on a footballer that Chelsea are prepared to do, that Man City are prepared to do, that Manchester United are prepared to do. Tottenham are not in that marketplace and he's accepted it. So so what's he chucking at us here? Realism or defeatism? No, I don't think it's defeatism, isn't, no. isn't it? I don't, think it's, I don't think it's bouncing out the door with the, with the megawatt smile that Jurgen Klopp does. I don't think it's that same dynamic because he doesn't have the same luxuries that Pep has with an expenditure opportunity. So I think what he's doing is Temp- I didn't like what he did after the Mura defeat when he turned and said, what am I, a magician? It didn't need a magician. You could have got Mike Bassett to manage that well, team he's, he's and beat the Portuguese team. He's virtually that- sending a message like that here. No, no it's all, Jim, it's always about balance. It's always about balance. I think a manager has to be very careful to, on, on either way, being overly positive where the fans are going, hold on, you can't pull the wool over our eyes. We've got problems and vice versa. He, he's, he's trying to find a balance by, by being honest... And answering some questions because he's, you know, some of the questions will be loaded, of course. But I think there's a line you have to draw back on, and you have to give. He does say as well, which hasn't been highlighted, about we will fight, and he also says to the fans, "Don't panic," which suggests to me he's there to do what he's saying. If coach players, make them better. The only thing that contradicts all of this is if he knew what he was getting into, and it was going to be a philosophy. Why is he signing eighteen month contract? Why is he signing an eighteen month contract if he's in there to? To build the team, yeah. build up the players, coach them, make them better. Yeah. For who? For because, someone else. Because to come Conte in. was in the box seat, and I suspect it's Conte saying, "Let's have a look and see." Right? You tell me that you're going to allow me time. You tell me that you, we can, I can buy younger players that are going to have potential, and I'm going to be managed in a certain way, and I'm going to be given consistent support. Well, I've seen some of that from you, Daniel, and I've seen your reputation precede you. So what I'm going to do is because I'm not desperate for this job, because you're going to pay me a fortune to do it, because I'm economically sound, and even if I don't make a success here, I can go somewhere else. I'll get a contract on my terms, and we'll have a little look see about you, Daniel. Daniel. So in the summer of this year, where I am expecting you to back me with a proliferation of young, talented players, I might get four at 30 million quid rather than one at 100 million quid. I might get that sort of spend pattern from you. Then I'll be in charge of my destiny, not you. I, and, and I've and got I no, that's it. I've yeah. got no problem with that. And, and that I, shows you how Tottenham are weak in that negotiation, quite frankly, because it should be the other way around. Yeah. It should be the other way around. <laughs> and, I, and I still feel... And I take your point, Simon, about the language thing. I yeah. do know what you're saying there, but I just think, you know, we, he's suiting his own narrative here. He well, knows exactly self, what he's self-preservation doing. Self-preservation is there in football through play, for players, managers and owners alike. And I don't and like that. And that's why I loved Tuchel last year. And that's why I've always had this love in for him, because he went straight out of the gate and said, here I am, <laughs> lights on, I'm going to win something. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then left it all out there. But what I was going to say, is I still think Tottenham fans should be positive because he is proven. 
He is. Yeah, I agree. He's a great manager. He'll get the best out of the lads he's got. It's whether the lads he's got have the quality. And at the moment, they can't compete with the top boys. We know that if you look at the squad. Well, that's right. But let's give him the summer, see who he brings in, see what Daniel does. And I think this time next year, we'll have a much better idea of where Tottenham are at and the job he's done. Absolutely right. Should they get fourth? Should they be in the top four? Should they be fourth? Well, they should be nowhere near it based should, on should finances and squad. No, uh, not based on squad. Based on finances. We can't do it by finances. No, I was going to say finances and squad quality. They shouldn't be anywhere near United, no, should they? They won't get fourth. Uh, who's in the best position to get fourth? Man United. We, 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 West Ham, Man United or Tottenham? Man United. They've, Man got United. they've got the best squad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Arsenal. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.